we're going to do a posterior glenohumeral joint mobilization in somewhat of a neutral open packed position for your patients that have real limited internal rotation. They are tight as snot. So I'm going to place the wedge underneath the spine of the scapula to stabilize the scapula so that socket's not moving at all and just the ball is. I'm going to get this person. These are people when they lay here, they can't quite get that. Okay. So I'm going to put them shy of locking up. I'm going to have them embrace their fingers or lock their fingers. So when I push on the ball, if they're tight, they're going to do this when I push. So they stabilize the distal end. I step around. I'm working at an anterior medial to posterior lateral angle in a parallel line from the coracoid to the posterior angle of the acromion that should be parallel with the joint surface. I purchase as much of the humeral head as possible. I may even bunch some skin so I'm truly getting a mob. And she just slides right out. <laughs> she doesn't need this procedure done, but this is my mobilization procedure. And yes, her humeral head is actually moving that much, and I'm not even really sitting on it. But your people that are tight, you're going to get a little bit of a give, and then you're going to hit your restriction. You're hitting your restriction right away. You need to decrease how tight you already made them and maybe take them into more of a true open pack position, build up some pillows, drive it posterior. And you can sit on this for a long period of time for a low to moderate grade mobilization for posterior capsule early stage cut. Your capsule, glenohumeral joint mobilization that's a little later in the stages. They have more range of motion but not full. I'll take them out into a little bit more abduction. I'll rest them, bias them towards internal rotation. I'm still stabilizing the scapula with the wedge. And I can get on here with my webbing space between my thumb and my forefinger, right on the humeral head. Again, I'm driving it at an angle from anterior medial to posterior lateral, and I'm mobbing their posterior capsule in that position. And I know I'm getting a posterior mobe in this position with a patient such as this real easy because I can feel it just glide right out. So if you're in this position, driving anterior medial, posterior lateral, stabilizing here, stabilizing the scapula with the wedge, you know you're mobilizing that capsule. And you literally just kind of lean into it, lock your elbow, this table is a little high, lock your elbow, lean into it and mobile it with your body as much as possible. If you're really trying to emphasize the posterior inferior aspect of the glenohumeral ligament, it's a little more challenging because this is more straight posterior. Posterior inferior, I almost have to come around to the other side. I'll stabilize similar position, but now I'm coming up over the arm and I'm driving it in what would be a posterior inferior direction. And again, she slips right out, so she's not the person that would need to be mobilized. But you can see how much she moves, and that's the direction I'm trying to take her humeral head for a posterior inferior mobilization. Hypotenar eminence right there. Try to lock the elbow, use my body weight. What you do have a tendency to get with this is scapular depression, the more inferior you go with it, and that's a tough thing to stabilize. I'll show a belt technique here in a minute, try to help stabilize that as well. But we always have our wedge so we're not distracting the AC joint. And these posterior glenohumeral joint mobilization techniques, okay, if we don't have this and we have a distal clavicolectomy, weakest link in the chain, that AC joint's going to get stretched out. Not much more. So now we're going to talk coracohumeral ligament mobilization, which according to Fowler's research is the chief restrictor, like 67%, into flexion, is the passive restraint person doesn't go into flexion, it's a passive restriction, we're going to have to assume that that's part of the restriction. I want to take them up into flexion, I want to take them into horizontal abduction, and the reason we're going to do that is because that's the line of the fossa from anterior medial to posterior lateral. We're going to connect with their elbow here, get my forearm in a similar line of direction. I'm stabilizing their scapula with the spine of their scapula running right between my index and my middle finger and I'm creating somewhat of a cup with the palm of my hand for that humeral head to go posterior into. 
I can get here. If it's hard on my body and I've got a big patient, I may even get my body into this, but I'm driving it as much posterior lateral as possible. I've biased it into external rotation because that tightens up the ligament a little bit more. If I tighten them up too much this way and too much this way, they're just going to impinge and it's going to hurt them before you even put pressure on them. So make sure they're shy of being fully tight. That may be hand on cheek and that may be pure flexion. You can still get it and eventually work them out into this position where you can drive it posterior for the corpohumeral ligament mobilization. Alternate technique would be same position. I'm over here with the webbing in my hand and I'm driving it back that direction from this position. Cut. Okay. Um, we're going to be working an inferior mobilization of the glenohumeral joint for the posterior inferior, anterior inferior, inferior capsule for people that are restricted into abduction, abduction external rotation, um, internal rotation, that whole complex. If I take the arm up into elevation, okay, this is your patient that can get to here and is just locked. So they've got a decent amount of elevation. I take them shy of being locked, so they're not technically perfectly closed, closed packed. I try to get this arm in the plane of their fossa. What's the plane of their fossa? Parallel to the coracoid, to the posterior angle of the acromion. Perpendicular to the spine of the scapula. First spine of her scapula is coming out at an angle like this, so I want to be perpendicular to it here. That is inferior mode for her as straight out the armpit for her humeral head. I have to stabilize that scapula somehow. I go with the webbing thumb and forefinger. I stabilize here and I give a translatory glide of my right arm on my left, driving the humeral head out the socket, or at least trying to, inferiorly to get that mode. So this is your tight inferior capsule. And I can bias it a little bit more posterior. I can bias it a little bit more anterior just by moving which way I'm pushing. Forearms should be parallel to each other because that's the plane you're going in. Cut. So this is another mobilization for a posterior inferior um, capsular technique or capsular restriction. Your patient isn't going up in the flexion very well, don't have a whole lot of internal rotation, this in range flexion. What I'm trying to do is get a distraction as well as an inferior mobile. I'm going to set them in this position. And again, my line of the fossa is going to be coracoid to posterior angle of the acromion, about like that, perpendicular to the spine of the scapula. And then I'm going to try to drive it lateral, posterior, inferior. I get my hand underneath the belt so it doesn't cut into their arm. I stabilize their elbow and then I sit back to pull. Okay, eventually they're going to, their scapula is going to not move as much and I can get almost like a little bit of an arc range of motion. Because this arm gets weak pushing with my tricep and it becomes unstable, a lot of times I stabilize it with my head and I can get a nice posterior inferior mobilization in this position. Probably not the best mobilization for someone's head, a distal claviculectomy, because I'm having a hard time stabilizing that scapula and keeping it perfectly still. I can belt it, which we'll talk about here in a little while, to help stabilize against that. But this is more so your person that has a stable AC joint that's just restricted in elevation. I can bias more of an inferior mode. I can bias more of a lateral mode, depending on where they're tightening up.